Boxes are a straightforward example of at least one smart pointer that is in Rust. A box allows you to store data on the heap instead of on the stack. My name is Ricky and welcome to the dev method. So instead of like copying values all over the place, passing into functions on the program stack, uh, you can actually store your data inside of a box and that is stored off to the side on the heap. So you avoid a lot of different memory copies and really all you're passing around are just copies of the pointer back to the thing in the heap. So on today's show, we're gonna talk about at least one of the smart pointers, which is box or a box of T. And this is how you can store stuff on the heap and avoid copies in your application. It's not recommended for something small, but I would recommend it for something that's very large or maybe expensive to copy around on your program stack. So box of T is known as like a smart pointer because box implements this defer trait. And this allows you to take that type T and reference it, or it's like treated like a reference. So if you're unfamiliar with the concept of stack versus heap, there's plenty of different things you can find on the internet about it. You can also go back to the Rust programming book, chapter four, where they introduce the concept there as well. So box is often used in these three different types of ways. So when there's a size at compile time, the compiler doesn't know what the size is supposed to be. So that's one. So when you have a large amount of data, you want to transfer ownership, but you want to avoid such an expensive copy. Or the last one, if you want to own something by its trait rather than the actual specific type that it actually is, like the underlying T. Traits can be learned about more in chapter 17 of the Rust programming book under the section of using trait objects that allow for values of different types. And they have other examples of boxes as well. So let's look at our first implementation of using something with a box. So here on line 18, I have uh, the variable B. It's going to represent a box of some number. That happens to be an I32. And then we just print it out. So this is the most easy way to do this. So I'm, I'm gonna just run this here so you can see an example. So we'll do cargo run. All right, so print it out, B equals five. No surprise there. Now the key thing that we can't see that's happening when we're compiling this is that uh, as soon as the underlying T goes out of scope, that's, a, that's pretty much the same time as B going out of scope. And when that happens at the end of main, then it's deallocating all the memory underneath that box. So it deallocates the box, but therefore has to also deallocate uh, whatever T is. So in this case, it's our five. This is a very small example, but this gives us the idea of how box can be used and why it's so memory efficient in that way. So I don't know if you've ever heard of something called a cons list, but I'm going to give you an example here. So uh, in some programming languages, uh, there's a way to like recursively store things. And this is one of those as a cons list. So just take that outside uh, parenthesis there. I have it highlighted for you. Um, that actually stores one and then another cons list. And so if I go to the next one in, then that stores two. And then again, another cons list. Now the last one here stores three. And then it says nothing nil but it actually could be another cons list. So the idea is that this is how the compiler is stepping through the structure of that list, but it doesn't know its particular size. Now, in this case, I think we all can look at it as humans. I mean, we know, but let's look at what a cons list might represent in Rust. So here's that list as an enum. So there it is, list. And the idea is that this is a recursive type because it references itself again. However, with Rust, it's going to want to go through this enum and try and calculate what its size could be. And uh, right now, nil, eh, it's going to be nothing. But uh, here on the cons variant, it needs to at least have enough space to hold an I32, but then also another list. What is that list going to be? Well, it's going to be an I32. But then it's also going to have another list. So you can see here, we're just recursively going on with the type into infinity. So let's look at an example now. So here we are um, going to use the cons list. And here I am defining it. Cons, 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 cons. There it is. So 
from here, um, if we were to try and build this, let's see if we get any issues at all. So cargo run. Aha, we have some issues. I'm going to make this larger so we all can read it at the same time. OK, so here it is saying we have a recursive type of infinite size. So that's the issue. We can look on further to maybe uh, figure out how we can fix it. But then also notice that here it says cycle detected when computing drop check constraints for our type called list. So um, here it says note this list, which immediately requires computing drop check constraints for list again. <laughs> There's the N on the next line. Uh, cycle used to compu uh, compute a drop check type. And then it goes into some more fancy detail in Rust. But um, this is our concept here that we're working with. So let's take a step back and let's maybe explain a little bit of what Rust is doing when it's trying to calculate this size of an enum variant. So here I have an enum. Um, it's just a message. And what Rust is going to do is going to look through all the variants. And if we had a message quit, well, has no value, so basically is nothing. But then it looks at move. And it goes on throughout this, and it says, OK, well, we have uh, some sort of X property, and that is an I32, so we need to leave space for that. And then uh, a Y, which is also an I32, so we need some space for that. And it goes on and on throughout all of these different variants and tries to calculate what that size of that message could be at compile time. So now you might have seen it in the error output before. It suggested to us, but the thing we're going to use to fix this is a box. So what that means is that we don't know what the size of this is at compile time. Um, we just are going to let this be dynamic as the application grows and grows in memory. And that space is then going on the heap in this case. So let's try and run this and see if we've uh, broken anything by adding box. So cargo run. All right, so it says, uh, here it is, expected a struct of box, but found a list, right, the cons. So we got to go back in here and make all of these boxes. So we do this, we do box, colon, colon, new. Just wrap it in that. And then we here do box, colon, colon, new. Wrap it in that. And uh, I think we should be done. Let's just double check, run the compiler, and see. Cargo run. Whoops, one more. So instead of nil, because that is a list here, box, colon, colon, new, wrap it around nil. I know, it's a lot of parentheses, but this is just an example. So let's run this. Cargo run. There we are. Nice. Cool, fix the problem. So something we have to think about here is that box has some sort of internal pointer to whatever that list might be or whatever the type is that is here. And that is actually a use size. So we don't have to recursively go back and look at how big a list is to then figure out what the size of this is gonna be. So a cons is gonna be an I32, whatever size that is, plus the size of use size. Now, if you want to learn more about Box, you can look at its definition, actually, in the documentation. So I'll add this link in the description for you. So here it is, a pointer type for heap allocation. Talks about some of the things that we just talked about ourselves. Um, and here it is. Look at this little detail. Boxes also ensure that they never allocate more than high size max bytes. Very cool. It's got some examples on here, too. And it actually goes into um, our example that I just put out here shows that. And then it also goes into like the memory layout. So if you're into that, you know, just take a look at it. It says box uses this allocator uh, global, and it uses the memory layout here. Um, all sorts of really cool, interesting stuff. So if you want to take a look, I got the link in the description. So no worries there. All right. So if you like what you saw, go ahead and subscribe or hit the like button and send it to a friend. If you guys want to follow me on Twitter, it's the dev method. I'll be posting when new videos go out so you can just stay ahead of the game and, and see what new things we're discussing here. Also, did you like talking about smart pointers? Let me know in the comments below. All right, so I'll see you next time.